Hello and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Alex Hogue and I will be your host today. I am joined by Tyler White for about the next 90 minutes or so. We're going to be hanging out in Premiere Pro and Tyler is going to show us his workflow for uh, creating social media videos, uh, short form stuff. And uh, we're going to be talking about tech safe margins using the auto reframe tool inside of Premiere, uh, the remix tool, which is really cool. If you haven't played with it, it'll change your pro. Um, whether you are watching from Behance or over on YouTube, funnel in your questions. Uh, myself and Tyler will try to an answer those as best as possible. And uh, speaking of the chat, I already see people in there. I see Wade, uh, Andreas. Let's see, we got Paco, a whole bunch of people in there. <laughs> and um, yeah, subscribe button on Behance. In this video, YouTube, I'm going to share. And uh, also over on Instagram at Adobe Live. So. With all that, uh, Tyler, how are you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing good, Alex. Uh, super stoked to be here. Sorry, you probably just heard that in the background. I probably just scared everybody to death there for two seconds while you were in the middle <laughs> of talking. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. To, I've streamlined my process in a way to be able to pump out you know, videos efficiently, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, but before I get too you know, far ahead of myself, um, hey, my name's Tyler, and you know, I'm, I'm a content creator on YouTube. And uh, I've been doing this for, I don't know, a little bit over like nine years now, I think maybe 10 years. Um, but really, I've been on YouTube since like 2007. Um, I started off uh, creating videos like skateboarding content and stuff like that. Um, and then I moved on to like doing video games, you know, the whole Call of Duty era. And then uh, I went from like a, a stage where I wanted to like I wasn't you know, doing video, playing video games as much. So I wanted to do some like IRL content. Um, and so I like, but nothing that was really uh, done very seriously. Um, so what I do now is I, I'm a creator that, you know, helps, you know, I try to help creators, other creators discover ways to be able to uh, elevate their content in a ways like through, through video editing. And that way they can ultimately grow their YouTube channels and their business and be able to help people do the same. Um, that's really what I want to do. And I know it, it might sound like a little bit deep or whatever, but that's, that's like really what, you know, you know, what inspires me to, to do things. Ultimately, what I would like to do is eventually have like my own, uh, film that I, you know, say that I've, you know, produced a movie and that's what I left behind on this earth. That's what I would love to do. But, you know, this is, this is the, uh, the avenue or the, the way that we're going at this moment. Um, and I think, you know, what drove that passion was really just like, you know, I, I started, I, I, I think the first time I ever. All right. So sorry, but go mm -hmm. ahead and uh, give us the short version of.
All right, guys. Uh, third time's a charm. Hopefully we're getting the <laughs> internet sorted out, but, uh, Tyler, uh, let's try this one more time. Go ahead and give us kind of a short recap of, uh, your background. And then also, uh, let us know what you're going to be working on today. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I've been, you know, creating videos since, like I said, back in, uh, like 2007 with skateboarding videos and stuff like that. And then I went into like video games, like call of duty was the, all the, you know, the rage back then. And so I started doing gaming videos and then, I got to a point where I wasn't playing video games as much and I wanted to do more IRL content. And I had like an assignment from like my eighth grade teacher. So what really got me into video editing was like, it was like a skit that we did with uh, in Windows Movie Maker. And I ended up being the one tasked with editing it. Um, but, you know, that's, that's kind of what got me my start. And then like now it's just like become a passion of mine. Storytelling is like, you know, I, I really enjoy storytelling and I enjoy helping people um, tell better stories. And that's what my whole YouTube channel is kind of based around is like to be able to help people make videos and tell stories the way that they, they want to tell them. Um, and so that's kind of what we'll be going into today is like, like how I, like why I make the choices that I make, what my process kind of looks like. Um, and that way I can be able to, because, you know, a big thing on social media now is like the volume of content that you can put out. You see like all these different podcasts and things um, that are, you know, have clips and things like that. And so I'm going to go into some ways of like how I did that using a specific video that I just uploaded. Um, it was a listicle style video where I was, you know, I basically talk about five different points, like editing mistakes. And if I, what I do is I go in and I will uh, identify specific ones that if I, I can make a short out of, and I can post that on whether it, I can repurpose it and use it as a short on YouTube or use it as, you know, short form content on Instagram or TikTok. Uh, because I, I truly believe that um, there's different audiences on different platforms and you want to serve them in the ways that they want it to be served. Like for me, on when I'm on Instagram, I'm typically looking at, you know, reels or photographs and things like that. So they, I'm not looking for, you know, the experience is going to be a little bit different versus whether I would go on YouTube to look at like a video editing tutorial. I'm not sure about if that's the case with you, Alex. Yeah. Um, and if you guys, you guys let us know in the chat what, what you usually do, how... Where do you go to, you know, look for like editing tips and things like that? But a lot of what I see is like, you know, editing tips and things. I, I really look at like quick, you know, wanting to get the point of, uh, across quick, fast and in a hurry type of thing. Yeah. Is that something that. you do, Alex? Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to touch on, I mean, what you just said, I, I absolutely love um, the idea of different platforms have kind of a different audience. So sounds like that's going to be a lot of what we're talking about today. And um Big thanks to everyone in the chat and in the streams uh, on YouTube and Behance stick it around. But with that, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to pass it off to you and let's dive into it. It's not right. keeping anyone waiting any longer. For sure. All right. So what I have right here is the actual that uh, the video I was talking about on YouTube. This is the actual project and this is the the final cut and what the timeline looked like. I'm working with a uh, essentially a multicam sequence here, but it's a very, very simple uh, two camera multicam sequence setup. And so in here are different points and things that I go through. And like I said, I like to um, be able to identify, you know, ones that I want to repurpose and use uh, as um, short form content. And so what I did is I have right here is uh, one that I specifically go into uh, storytelling on. And I talk about, you know, specifically like how having a conversation with someone and, and like when you're trying to think about like how you're going to tell a story in real life. So essentially what I'll do is when I'm going into this, you know, and when I want to use this portion is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and just find where I want it to begin, where I want it to end. So we'll just go in here. I'm going to share with you. I'm going to go ahead and cl clear this out. And then what I'll do is I'll go in and find that start point, which I believe. And I, I, I set a marker here for this, but just so that you can see it and I just kind of play it out. In my opinion, I think every video on YouTube should have some sort of a story, and I'll explain why. Think of your YouTube video like a conversation. All right, so that's the good part for the beginning and then the end down here. Or, and it just completely blows your mind. That is what I think about when I think about storytelling. Is that and that's a good portion that I you know, think is you know, a good way to end off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to highlight that entire area. And again, like I said, I'm using a multicam uh, sequence here. So there's more than one camera, but I, I do wanna include that just in case I want to um, change the frame to make it look just, you know, 
cut to a different angle and I'll talk more, touch more on that in just a bit. But then I'm just gonna right click, go up here and I'm going to make a subsequence out of this. And then that subsequence should open up over here on the left hand side. And so I'll just go ahead and rename this storytelling. Um, and then we'll just do short. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that new sequence that was created. And that should open it up down here on the timeline. I wanna make this a little bit bigger because I, I like to. Yeah, then we can all see it there Maximize too. my workspace <laughs> and make sure that we can all see. Um, so now you can see that what that's done is it just pulled in that portion uh, of the final cut into a brand new timeline. And it didn't affect anything, any like the actual final cut. And this is just my way of just being able to one stay organized and to just have a little bit smaller of a workspace to to work in. Um, the next thing I'll do is, uh, which is really nice that Adobe like can like you can instantly make this into a uh, vertical style video um, very very quickly and uh, you know just you know with, with just a few different changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just highlight everything in this new subsequence, um, and then I'm going to go up here to I'm going to go up here to sequence and then I'm going to go down to auto reframe sequence and it's going to open up this portion here. And uh, this is where, like, again, I want to just make sure that I name it whatever I want to name it. Um, and we're actually going to be making this into a vertical style video. So this being set to nine by 16 is perfect. And then you have the option of selecting target aspect ratio. And this is like, on Instagram, you can post all kinds of different aspect ratio sizes, and I can kind of touch on that a little bit. So aspect ratio, just meaning like the framing of your shot. So think of like, if you watch a video on YouTube, that's not a YouTube short, just a normal long form video, you're most likely watching it just traditionally in a 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is just that landscape style. Uh, think about like holding your, your phone sideways like this, that is uh, landscape. Or if you were viewing something on social media, this would be vertical. And so what we want to do is I want to create something for uh, TikTok and Instagram. And what the, the aspect ratio for that is going to be nine by 16. But you could also, you know, post things on Instagram in a, a square or a vertical four by five if you want. But we're going to be going with a nine by 16 aspect ratio. And the next option here is uh, motion tracking. And this is one that you it depends on what you're what's going on within the frame. Because the motion tracking is done to be able to, you know, center the subject in the frame, uh, because it's going to try to track the subject or what it thinks is the subject um, to keep it in the center of the frame. Now, if you have lots of movement going on in your video, like if I were like moving my head around a whole bunch, um, or it was like somebody was running or doing something, um, you would definitely want to do something other than default. And typically, what I'll do is if I have like slower motion going on, like that there's movement. Uh, in the shot, so a person was walking slowly, I would select the slower motion. And if there was someone like running or like moving very quickly across the frame, um, then I would select faster motion. Um, but for this, this is just a normal talking head video. So I'm gonna go with the default option. Perfect, and yeah, it, if you ever need to change it too, um, there's ways to kind of like override those keyframes and everything, but yeah, for sure. default, default's a great option. Mm -hmm. And then going down here for clip nesting. Now you have one or two options. Now you can select not to nest. Um, and what that's gonna do is it's going to replace your current motion adjustments. So like um, like I said, if, it's gonna try to track the subject. So if you had, um, if you had like, in, you use let's say the transform effect um, and you were like tracking a subject that way, and then you were to do this, uh, you, you were to select this option, what it would do is it would actually replace the, you know, that transform effect and in place would actually track it using auto reframe. Does that make sense, Alex? I, I yeah, 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 perfect. And so um, what I'll do is, you know, I, I, what I want to do is I'm just going to, just to make it simple, I want to nest these clips. And what it's going to do, I didn't use any transitions. Now, if you use transitions, you don't, you're probably not going to want to do this. Um, but I didn't use any transitions. So this is going to simplify because I'm using like a multicam and everything like that. Um, this is going to simplify that for me. So what I'm going to do is just click that and then select create. And that should only take a few seconds, um, depending on uh, what you're working with. But, you know, as you can see here, it's analyzing for auto reframe, but that, you know, how long it takes in comparison to like having to do it manually 
uh, can save you like a whole whole bunch of time. Great. Yeah, I think uh, the other thing too, I noticed at the beginning, you said you can highlight all the clips. I also know in the project bin, you can right click there and there's, I don't know if it's always been there, but there is an option there to do it just from right clicking on the sequence as well in the project bin, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, for sure. Thing to know. Yeah, so um, once that, as I'm uh, doing that now, what I'll do is I'm kind of just uh, looking, because you, as you can see now, what it's done is it's actually putting me in the, the center of the frame or what it thinks is in, in, in the center uh, of the frame. Um, and this can be, you know, like I said, you can go back and do like a 16 by 9, you can do 4 by 5, and you just see that this actually matches what a normal uh, 9 by 16 would be. And, you know, if you didn't want to do this, uh, you could just go up to, you know, this creates a brand new sequence, but if you wanted to do it manually, you could just go up here to sequence and go up to sequence settings. And then you can see that what is actually the frame size that it's changing to. Um, but if you're using like something 4K, you could do uh, 2160 by 31, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, 2160 by 3840. Um, and you could go in there and manually do it that way. Um, I think that's, I don't know why I'm losing that right now. But it's yeah, just because that's the, the frame way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the old We're school doing way. Math again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but that's this this is what you would have to manually go in and do. And then you would have to go in and then use keyframes and just manually like retrack everything. So instead of having to go through that whole process, you save yourself time by just doing the auto reframe thing. Yeah. Um, it's so so easy and way cool. faster. So, so and it'll what, automatically scale it up too, which is great. Yeah, man. Um <laughs> And let me, let me know in the chat if you guys and just let me know Alex if they if they if I'm moving too fast tell me and I can slow down I know there's times where I can I get super passionate and I can just start like yeah no you're I can just good. take I think, off I think this is great <laughs> all right um so what I'm going to do is I'm actually excuse my face lord um what I can do is I I'm actually if I wanted to this was let's say that it wasn't in the frame properly like what Alex was talking about earlier you can go into effect controls and you can actually adjust the the reframe offset um, and make it center. Let's say, for example, you know, it was way too far to, the, you know, it's too far to the right or too far to the left. What you could do is you, you could just go in and adjust your reframe offset and place it where you, where it needs to be in the frame. Um, and that's going to update that one specific clip. Um, and, and what I've, the, the worker, like what I've found to make this like the fastest because it's not perfect, you know, there's there's all kinds of, you know, depending on what's going on in your clip, it may not be 100% perfect, but this reframe offset makes it really simple for you to be able to bring the subject back into the frame and it kind of fixes everything else for you. And what I like to do is I'll, I'll click on over in effect controls, I'll just click on the auto reframe effect and I'm just gonna press control C or command C on Mac. And then what I'm gonna do is go and highlight these other, uh, basically other clips right click on it and then go up to remove attributes this and this is just if you when you reframe the subject or whenever auto reframe you know did its thing it's, it doesn't have the subject in the center we're going to actually remove this auto reframe and Oops. and real quick tyler um before we go too much further i want to give a I see Roland over here on YouTube and he's asking a question of what yep. happens to the text and transitions uh when you do this auto reframe Okay, great question. Um, so if you opted for the uh, to not nest the clip or to yeah to not nest the clips, you should be uh, good to go. Um, it just depends on uh, like typically what I'll do um, and is is I will actually just apply this auto reframe. Um, it, it'll redo it if you were to just like go in and cut up an entire segment. Let's say from like I did with my long form video. Then it will it will do the exact same thing for you with the text. Mm -hmm. um, it just depends on. But sometimes there there has been some cases to where like it's had the text that was it was off for me or something like that. It depends on where the text is positioned. Um, but what I would what I, the workaround that I've had for that is just to go into the Final Cut and then copy and paste and just then just scale down that text that you have. But if you have transitions. Um, it's going to, it will affect those transitions if you uh, do select the option to nest. And I've noticed too, I know we're going to talk about this later in the stream about captions. Um, but if you do build out your original sequence in 16 by 9 and you have captions, uh, when you do this reframe, it'll actually resize your captions, which is so handy. So, for sure. 
So I'm going to, what I'm doing is I'm removing this auto reframe because what I don't want to do is just copy and paste the same effect over another effect. So we just, what we did is we copied this auto reframe here and then we've removed it from the others because what we plan to do is we're going to now press command or control V on the keyboard and that's going to go ahead and apply that auto reframe. And it's going to take a second. It will need to reanalyze but that mm -hmm. applied that new auto reframe or that adjustment to those new clips. Um, that's just a way of you being able to make that change across all of your clips if you need to. Sweet. Love now, um, going through that now, so what I'll do is I, now what I want to do is I'm going to listen back to it just to make sure it's all good because we're at a point to where now we're going to, what does it just have pop up here one second. Oh, good. And while you guys are doing that, or while, sorry, while Tyler, while you're doing that, um, I do want to mention to everyone in the chat and listening, uh, Adobe does have a pretty cool podcast, which I actually didn't know about. So uh, go to wherever you listen to your podcast. It's called In the Making, and it features Adobe's Teresa Al. Uh, she has conversations with some of the people who make up the creator economy. There's already been some really cool episodes, great guests, got John Yushai, who discusses viral content and making uh, money on social media. So pretty cool. Uh, as long as well as uh, Puno from the design studio and educational platform. I love creatives. Some other episodes, great guests on there. Go check it out. It's called In the Making, and you can find it on any podcast platform, major podcast platform. So with that, Tyler, let's hop back into you. All right. Um, so what we're going to do now is we've auto reframed. Everything looks good. I got the subject in the center. We're good to go. Now I'm at the point in the process to where I want to go through and just kind of cut my clips and make it look, make sure that it, it, I have everything in there that I want. Um, so what I'll do is I actually like to go ahead and just, I'm going to go ahead and make a, a copy of this. Um, that's one big thing that I would always recommend, like having your like, you, you have your rough cut and then you can pull from your rough cut for additional things that you want. So I like to make an additional sequence because for whatever reason, if I don't like something when I recreate, you know, create a new uh, sequence, um, I can always go back to the original and pull from that. So it's super helpful for me. So yeah, let's go I can't over. stress enough in my video editing career, just uh, duplicating sequences um, constantly, just so you have backups if you ever need to go back. Uh, super helpful. So what we're going to do is we'll leave this and we'll actually just go ahead and just name that uh, the storytelling cut. And so now what we have is when we click on it, should open up here. And now on the timeline, you have a new sequence. So whatever changes we make to this sequence will not affect this sequence here. So now we're going to go in here and I want to show this real quick because this is just so that uh, because this is what my keyboard shortcuts are. Um, and so you can see kind of like as I'm sifting through the timeline, um, what those shortcuts are and really what just I've I've found that helps me edit the fastest. So let me go over here awesome. to we love the tips and tricks and the shortcuts. <laughs> Keep them coming. <laughs> so what I have. Uh, so I, I only for my left hand. My, I try to not ever let my left hand leave the keyboard. Um, so I will have one, two, and three here. So shuttle left is to make, so basically I can press the number one and it will allow me to reverse. Like, so if I, let's see, I don't know if it'll let me, I don't think it's going to let me, but if I want to reverse, like I'm playing back my footage and I want to rewind, I can press one and it'll rewind it at normal speed and I can keep pressing one and it will two, two X, three X, and so you, basically like you're rewinding super fast through your footage. Uh, two is set to shuttle stop. So basically that's like pressing the space bar and, and stopping and or playing and pausing your video. And then three is one that I use the most often is used for being able to just like shuttle or fast forward through your footage. So again, an example I give you is like, so let's say you have like a four hour, four hours worth of footage that you need to go through or something. If you want to be able to go through that to be able to find all the sound bites that you want to use, instead of playing that back at four hours, I can, you know, use shuttle right and fast forward through that. And if you 2X that, you just took, I mean, not that it's going to make it two hours, that's just to watch it, you know. Yeah, yeah. But it's going to definitely cut that time in half to be able to play back the footage and everything. Um, and so that's what the, those uh, one, two, and three is where my 
uh, my ring finger, my middle finger, and my index finger, that's where they lie at. Um, and that's how I'm able to sift you know, left and right on the timeline. And then uh, be right directly below that, uh, you have ripple trim. And this is, I got this from, this isn't like my setup. I got this, uh, Sam Coulter um, is, you know, the guy that, you know, I s first seen doing this and I've implemented it into my workflow and it just, it makes it so much faster because just below that you have, um, what I'll do, uh, you have track select four tool. Actually, that's one second. And to, to Debbie, I mean, and everyone else in the chat. Yeah, these will be available as replays archived. So definitely go back, freeze frame this, take a screenshot. Super helpful stuff. I love seeing everyone's personal hotkeys mm -hmm. workflow. Like oh. even after doing this for so long, it's just mm -hmm. so fun. It's probably the most exciting part to me is seeing what everyone else is doing and how I can make my workflow quicker. <laughs> so I have, uh, so set to queue here is ripple trim, previous edit to playhead. And what that means is that everything to the left of the playhead is going to get trimmed off. And I'm gonna, I'll demonstrate this in just a second. Um, and then add edit is just a simple cut. So instead of just going in and using the razor tool and going line by line, and then going back to the selection tool, what I'll do is just press, I'll you know go skim across on the timeline and then press W and that starts to cut. And then I can go to the very end, what, you know, a portion that I wanna trim off, press W again, and that adds another cut. And then you have uh, the, for E here, is ripple trim next edit to playhead. So everything to the right of the playhead will be cut off. And I'll kind of show you this in real time here in just a second. And so what that does is I'm able to, go ahead, Alex, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, uh, Debbie's asking a quick question, uh, which I think you could answer is, uh, are these presets or did you create them? Uh, um, just to recap for everyone that's kind of just tuning in right now. Yeah, I this, this is, um, I actually created these and let me, so let me actually backtrack a little bit and show you how you could go in and change these yourself. Um, so for basically, if you want to, they're up on the screen right now, but if you want to be able to uh, adjust yours to my preset um, or what, I, I'm sorry, to what my custom keyboard shortcuts are, just type in what they are. So we got shuttle left. Um, sorry, I think I just, oh, I didn't add the L, that's <laughs> what it was. Okay, shuttle left. So basically all you have to do is um, that's what I have the number one set to. You just click and drag that to there. And then now you have shuttle left is the number one. Um, and I recommend when you're, you're messing around with this, like you can play around and just, you know, find ways that work for you because you can always just go back up here to the Adobe Premiere default. And then you just have the default settings, um, which is reassuring. At least it you know was for me because whenever I was doing this, I was like, man, I really don't want to mess up. You know, <laughs> I, I could be pressing buttons that I don't like that take me someplace that I don't know how to get back from. At least that's how it was when I was first yeah. learning video editing. Yeah, you um, got a safety there to just reset. <laughs> <laughs> um, but important. yet, for each one of these, you can just type in down here in the search bar what it says right here, and you can just click and drag them directly to that spot on the keyboard. But where my hand lives at is it lives on one, two, three, Q, W, E, and then S for ripple delete. And what that does is basically just, it takes the portion that you're deleting and snaps the timeline together. And I'll show you that here in real time. So go ahead and I'll just press OK. I just wanted to share my keyboard shortcuts, Alex, because that way, you know, people, when they're following along, they'll see me like playing through, like, this is me like sifting oh, through the footage. In my opinion, I think every video on YouTube should have some sort of story. Now explain why. Think of your YouTube video like a And I can just press the space bar, or press two, and that it, it, you know, allows me to stop. And then I can go backwards if I need to. That sounds super weird and scary, but <laughs> <laughs> if you need to rewind. Ask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but now, you know, if I want to, you know, just zoom this in a little bit, I want to cut everything. So using Q, it's uh, ripple trim uh, previous edit to playhead. So everything to the left, if I press Q, will be cut and immediately snapped into place. So, and so they, they, they call this also call this top and tail editing. So you just that was the top. And the reason you're being intentional, with I want to cut everything to the right of the playhead, like to say this portion I want to remove. I press E and it cut all that out and it snapped the rest of the timeline into place. Um, now, uh, is that going to work if you're selecting, do you have to have all those tracks selected or how does that work? On, so on for, side? Yeah. yeah, so that works for the, the Q and E, that works for everything. I don't need to, because as you can see, I, I don't have anything. I just need to have the timeline. I believe it's just, let me see. Yeah, you don't have to have anything selected for uh, Q and E, but for W, you're going to, it's going to be based off of um, 
what you have selected. So what I what I'll do if let's say the add edit instead of going in and using your razor tool and you know having to do a cut and then going back and do the selection and move this over, which takes forever. Just find that spot, press uh, select that area you want to cut, press W, go to the very end of where you know. Let's say this is the end of what I want to cut. Highlight it, press W, and now you know, you know, I had ripple uh, delete set to S. So all, just below W is S. I highlight that area, or usually it will already be highlighted for you. Press S, it snaps everything back together. So my hand stays in one spot the whole time, doesn't ever leave the, the keyboard. It allows me to be able to edit so much faster. Yeah, between that, so just to recap, I mean, we're hanging out here with Tyler and he's kind of shown us how do you format your video automatically for nine by 16, which is that vertical style of video for social. Um, and then also he's just going over some of his shortcuts. And I mean, so far between the two, uh, efficiency is through the roof right now. Yeah. Um, for anyone in the chat, I'm curious, what are some of your shortcuts? Uh, if you have any, or maybe what's the most used one, um, but Tyler, what do we got next um, on the agenda here? Where, where are yeah, we heading? So, so what we want to do now is we're actually going to, we're about to start creating, uh, well, I'm about to start cutting down. Let me let me go through this real quick, make sure I like the way that it sounds. And then okay. we're about to move into uh, to captions. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just play this back. And the Perfect. reason you're being intentional with your editing is because you're working for something, which is the story. In my opinion, I think every video on YouTube should have some sort of story. And I'll explain why. Think of your YouTube video like a conversation that you're having with a person. I like to compare how to tell stories, like having a conversation, because we've all had conversations with somebody and some that are really good storytellers and then some that are kind of like all over the place and you know they, they talk really fast or kind of like I'm doing right now, right? But okay, they... uh, that portion right there where I just kind of talk to myself, um, <laughs> I don't want to actually have in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna trim that out, so. And some that are really good storytellers and then some that are kind of like all over the place and you know, and so this is another thing too um, that, that was super helpful for me when you're editing, like talk about the rhythm and pacing of your video. If you're especially if you're editing talking talking head, um, find that spot to where you naturally have breaks and you start a new part of your conversation. Because what I used to do is like these two would like I would just be like okay this is an empty space, um, and then I would uh, cut it and then I would go over here and I would bring these right close together, and that was a problem because like that's not how you naturally talk. Um, yeah. And, uh, and it's, it can be jar a jarring experience um, because it's like the rhythm is, is just like anything. You, 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 you know, it, it needs to sound, you know, especially with short form content because you're dealing with like swipe and if it, you, they're getting a negative experience, you're immediately swiping away. And it, negative can be many different things. It could just seem like unprofessional or um, like it, credibility goes out the window. So a big thing is like to always cut like right there just before you start speaking and then replace it with whatever audio you want to have come in there. Place and you know, they, they talk really fast or kind of like how I'm doing right now, right? But, what uh, but what platform talk... are you generally creating most for? Is it Instagram or I mean, obviously you got your YouTube channel, but, yeah. um, but you, you spoke to a little bit of the differences between audiences. Is mm -hmm. there maybe one key difference that you would say or a takeaway that someone here could? Mm -hmm. I say that I, I primarily I'm creating on YouTube, but just like I, I'm my business is based around being an entertainment company. And so what I like for you know, different uh, audiences um, and the value proposition is, is essentially the same, but how people consume content is uh, really what makes the, diff the different platforms unique. And so for YouTube, like I'll, I don't really do, the, I will do YouTube shorts, but a lot of times, and if we have time, I'll show you, I'll, I'll have dedicated videos that are specifically for YouTube shorts. Um, but for things like this, I don't like copying and pasting my, my whole video from YouTube straight into another uh, mm -hmm. another platform because it's like if you're on YouTube, you watch me on YouTube. If you're on Instagram, you probably just watch me on Instagram. So I want to be able to give you something unique, and I want there to be some sort of variety. Um, and that's why you have like all these different clips that you see from podcasts. Um, but I think that as long as you're, you know, I've, it's about the experience that you're trying to give the viewer and catering to what that platform has to offer. So I try to, you know, use shorter. Uh, short form videos to drive people to my long form content on YouTube is really my my objective whenever I'm creating short form content. Excellent strategy. Yeah, totally agree. Really fast or kind of like how I'm doing right now, right? But they talk really fast or they talk. talk they so I think I said or here twice. Place and, you know, they, they talk really 
some that are really good storytellers and then some that are kind of like all over the place and you know they they talk really fast or kind of like how i'm doing right now right but they they and while Tyler's uh, making those little edit changes, uh, and anyone some that watching are like all on the Behance, play. there is a guest recommendation tab up in the upper right-hand corner of the chat. If you have anyone or yourself that are interested in being a guest on the Adobe Live platform, uh, just fill out that form and submit it. So we'd love to have you here. Somebody, and some that are really good storytellers, and then some that are kind of like all over the place and, you know, so this is a case where I would just uh, press E on the keyboard and that should pop everything back together. Oh, so convenient. And they talk really <laughs> fast or they kind of like all over the place and they talk really fast or they talk too slow or they don't get to the point. All right, I'm good with that. Yeah, it sounds good. Those same things happen in your videos. Imagine you're meeting this stranger for the first time and they're telling you a story and it's all over the place. Like they don't really get to the point or when they first walk up to you, they start talking about something you've never heard of before and it just completely blows your mind. That is what I think about when I think about storytelling is that conversation that you're having with the viewer. Perfect. And I think there's a spot at the end down here that I just want to remove. Perfect. Okay. Now, so that's that's what we did. That went ahead and that's just a quick cut of everything. But I would, obviously, I would go back through this a few more times and just make sure that everything looked the way that I wanted it to do. Because what I'm going to be doing is also adding additional things to this to, to spice it up a little bit, make it a little bit different from what it was on YouTube. I'll add some, I have some B-roll and stuff from Adobe stock that I'll be showing in just a bit. So next, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create some captions. So in order to do this, what I wanna do is go up here to window. I wanna make sure that I click on text and that should open up your text window here. Now, if you're using, uh, since text-based editing um, came out and everything like that, I've had my, uh, going over to my Premiere Pro settings here, go down to preferences and go down to transcription. I have everything set, or I did have everything set to automatically transcribe clips. And what happens is, and I'll quickly explain, is that any clips that you bring into Premiere that have audio attached to it, clips, or, you know, or audio clips, um, Premiere will automatically transcribe it so that you are able to utilize text-based editing, which is a whole nother, you know, whole nother story in of itself, which is super, super helpful. Um, but you can turn on automatically transcribe clips and when, you know, when you create that new uh, project and uh, it'll auto transcribe your clips from your imported clips or only clips inside of a sequence. So you can select whichever one you want and then you can go in here and have it select different speakers and everything like that. Um, but let me show you real quick, if you didn't have that already set, how you can do that. So if you don't have auto transcribe on, what you can do is it's going to have bring up this portion here um, and you can go in and I'm just going to retranscribe this sequence because what will happen is when you open the text window, it's going to ask you, it's going to look, it's going to have a similar look to, oops, let's do this. Let me move these captions real quick so you can see what it looks like. And this is a, a relatively um, new feature with the live text editing and stuff. The transcriptions mm -hmm. has been in there for a while, but yep. anyone that's, uh, you know, watching and maybe if they don't see some of these features, just make sure to go in and update Premiere. It is all live in the mm -hmm. regular version now. For sure. And it's like so, so helpful. The um, So you should have something similar to this and it should say uh, create uh, transcript. Um, and so we, since we've already done that, um, all we're gonna do is just create the caption. So what you, or to show you how to treat, create the transcription. So retranscribe sequence. When you transcribe your sequence, it'll bring up this here. You can select whatever language and Adobe is always adding new languages in here. So always check back and see. Um, you can label the speakers. So if you're doing like an interview or something like that, you can have it label your speakers, which makes it really easy for like, if I'm doing interviews and things and I, I'm off camera, I can label myself talking whenever I'm prompting them with a question and stuff, which is super like, you know, makes it so much easier to be able to pull everything out. Um, and then you can go for audio analysis. Uh, you can select audio on track and select if you want to pull it from audio layer number one or a mix, if you're working with multiple layers of audio, um, or you can go in and have it uh, target clips that were tagged as dialogue. And you can do that inside of, um, um, Essential sound. If you open up the essential sound panel, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do it for, you know, transcribe the end to out point only, 
or you can just click transcribe and that will transcribe your sequence for you. But going back to it, I just wanted to show people because I didn't have it, you know, set to where it would go straight from transcription. I wanted to show everybody that way I just wasn't jumping or skipping a step if, if there were questions on how to do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here. Okay. And now we're going to, at this point, we should have an option to create captions. So we have our transcript. It's been created. We want to create captions. So let's create captions from our transcript. Now you have, before I get too far ahead of myself, if you want to edit your transcription, you can do that here. Um, but I find for me, this is just works for me. After I create my captions, when I'm watching it back, it's really helpful for me. You can still go in and make edits if you need to. So I'm going to go in and click create captions from transcript. And uh, Tyler, we got a question coming in from the chat. Yep. Is there a way to quickly eliminate, you know, coughs and that sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah. So um, and so if you were to go in, so as far as there's not, I don't think it, I have not seen yet that there is like a, a feature to where you can just remove, you can remove the pauses, but not filler words, which I, I'm hoping that Adobe it's coming in the future. Um, like being able to remove filler words and everything like that. But if you want to remove the silences, you can uh, show all the pauses here. Yeah, that's and, super handy. And you can uh, do that as well. So it can be super helpful. But I would just, um, for for those that are learning video editing, um, I'm, I'm not one to eliminate all the pauses because if you've ever heard like pause for effect, if you remove all those pauses, that those, those pauses in your videos might tell a certain type of story. It might be something that you intentionally do with the, you know, to affect the rhythm of your video. So I would just caution you, like just going in and removing all the pauses um, because sometimes those pauses are actually necessary. Um, so I just, I just don't want to throw off the cadence of the video and everything like that. Um, so that's just, uh, just, just a tip for that. But it is super helpful if you're just wanting to remove all the pauses from your video for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that. There you go, Debbie. There's your answer. All um, right. Sweet. All right. So Let's now see. that we have... We've got, got about 30 minutes or so before we okay. kind of do a recap. Cool, cool. Let me get through the captions. Okay. So now we've collect, or selected create captions from transcript. And you can select... A, I like to just go with subtitle default. Um, and then you can adjust the format if you want you can actually create different styles within a project. Now, if you have like a certain style that you want to apply to different uh, sequences within a project, you can do it there. Um, but what I like to do is I'll typically just go for like 10 to 12 and for the minimum duration in seconds. And this is, this is very like, this is just what I do. Um, you can play around with this and do you know, so many different things. <laughs> um, and then I'll go with a single line versus uh, if you want to do double, you can like you see those Alex Ramosi style captions all the time. Um, usually that's using double line text, but I like to go with single and then click create captions. And that's going to create your captions for you. And now it just spits them out there on the timeline. Now, um, Alex, you probably remember a time when you had to do all this manually. Um, oh, but yeah. this is like <laughs> just game changing being able to do this. And it um, works really well now too. Just yes, the transcriptions and everything saves literally days of time if you have a long project. And it's even it's so good because you don't even have to go like to make like changes here. You don't have to go back and forth between the uh, the essential graphics uh, workspace and everything like that, um, which is you know makes it so much easier. But now we're getting to a portion to where like I I like having this space on the timeline. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually transition my workspace at this point because it allows me to be able to see things a lot better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the workspaces tab and, you know, Adobe is, you know, knocking out of the park with all these different ways to be able to workspaces that make it super easy for you to be able to like edit the way that you want to edit. And you can customize these, you know, to your liking, however you want to do them. Um, but what I like to do is I'll go into the vertical workspace. And this is specifically for vertical style video. And you can see now this is nice and big. The timeline has an adequate amount of space uh, for you to be able to work in. And you can have access to various different other tabs. And if, let's say for whatever reason, you mess this all up. You throw something down here. You throw some effects up here. Guaranteed you know, to happen. <laughs> it, this is yeah, just because you accidentally click and drag yep. something. I've you can so get back times. to <laughs> 
this was the end of the world for me back in the day. <laughs> like, I'm like, like, where's I, my I cameras? First, where's my buttons? Yeah. How do I fix this? Um, you can go back and fix everything by going into workspace and click reset to save layout. And that's going to bring you back to that default view and it's going to save the day. Right. <laughs> I, so when just, I figured this out, it was just as we're uh, working here, would you say, uh, like your opinion, do you think that subtitles or captions are a necessity for social media? What's your take I, on that? I think so for short form content, because so many of us just think about your viewing behavior. That's the, at least for me, like most, this is just my opinion. In my, you know, in my experience, I only really watch short form in the morning sometimes and mostly at night before I'm going to bed. And a lot of times if I'm laying in bed with my wife, you know, sometimes you don't want to listen to the audio being super loud. So you just want to read the captions. And I know there's got to be like, you know, there's people out there that are doing the same thing. So, or, or like you're standing in line for a coffee or something. People aren't going to just sit there and just like have their phone blasting if they don't have an AirPod in or anything. So I think it's absolutely necessary. You're, you're missing an op out on an opportunity if you're not putting captions in the video because you're giving someone an additional way to be able to watch your video without having to listen to your video. Um, I was going off of that. I was just doing some travel this last week and on the mm -hmm. plane, there was that person just with the volume, blar uh, the <laughs> volume blaring and just, I, yeah, captions all the way. <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, so going back into the captions, um, open up my text tab here and we can move this around a little bit. Like that, I love that this is so customizable because I can just go back and forth between the text and the central graphics here and really, you know, refine these the way that I want them to be. So what I want to do, like these are normal captions here before I get too far ahead of myself, let's go ahead and click on this window here. And actually you should be able to find in the description of this video, I have some safe margins that you should be able to use. So I'm gonna click on my guides template. And this is the same template that I use to be able to put captions on the screen that are going to be readable and not covered up. So if you've ever been on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube and you know scroll through short form content, you know that they have like the things on the side that you know, you know allow you to be able to follow. You know, you can like the video, you can save it and all that. And then you have the like at the bottom of the screen, you have the title down here. So in order to have your captions not get covered up, I've created this kind of template that works for me and it works for both platforms. Now, you don't actually you don't have to follow this rule. Um, you can do whatever you want, but this is just what's been super helpful for me to make sure that my captions aren't getting covered up and people can can read them because if you make them too big. It might, you know, you put them too low on the screen, like down here, people may not be able to read them. So what I'm going to do now, go Absolutely. ahead. Alex. And for uh, anyone who might have missed that, Tyler has provided that free uh, file and it's just mm -hmm. in the description of the video, whether you're on YouTube or, or Behance. So go download it and then uh, go ahead and pop it in there. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of my captions. And what's super cool is like now you're able to go in to Essential Graphics and you can edit all of these captions all at once. Um, but I'll also show you here in a sec how you can do it just like if you wanna edit one caption. But this is super easy for me to highlight all of them. I'm gonna go in and select what font I wanna use. Let's go ahead and use the... Do you have a go-to font? I do have a go-to font. Mm -hmm. I was, there's like branding reasons and everything like that, but this is it's one of my go-tos right here. Um, and now, so that's the font that I want to use. Um, and if you want to, and I'll take you kind of through this real quick. If you want to capitalize all the letters, this is being, since I selected all of these, it's being applied to every single one of the other captions. So all these other words look just like this right now. Um, or if you want to use just lowercase, I'm going to go with lowercase because I like the look. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of this a bit. And I'm also going to bring my captions up. And you can tell like kind of how like I frame the video too. Yeah. Um, that this is usually like things that it covers up things like my mic. Um, You've and I like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and so now once you have it, you, you can use this. Let me for I just like not or I neglect this area. You can use this to put them in the center You can put them up high. You can put them down low where traditional subtitles would be in like a movie. Um, you can put them on the right side, so you can put them anywhere. But um, I like to just, you know, have the bottom, just raise it up. You know, you, let's see, you can bring it down too if you want. Whichever one you decide. I like to bring mine just about like right in this area. 
and again, the reason we're putting that there is just for on the various platforms, you'll have little buttons and chat windows popping up, yeah. right? Yeah, there's going to be buttons over here on the side. There's going to be like the title right down here in the description of the video. There might even be a link. Um, so this is just what I've you know tested and been able to give me. Or it doesn't cover anything up. Um, and uh, for the uh, folks that do go in and they actually uh, save this template, the way that you can get it inside of Premiere is just click on your, your project or your program monitor, go up here to um, view, and then go to guide templates and then manage guides. And then you can actually import the guides right here. So you can go in and import that if you want to that way. Um, and that's how you get it in there. And then all you have to do is just click on it, uh, actually click over here, and then you're good to go. And that'll have it inside of there just so that, because I didn't want to give, I don't want to get, provide you something and not show you how you can use it. Cause I, if you, someone would have given me this back in the day, I've been like, how do I put it into Premiere? Do I just click and drag it in? Yep. Um, you knew that question was coming. For Thanks sure. For, thanks for covering that. Yes, sir. Okay. So now let's go ahead and scroll down now that we have it positioned where we want it to be. And appearance down here is where you can really make it look the way that you want. So I like going for a yellow. So I, this is typically what I'll go for is this here. But you can change it to any color that you want. Like you can go all across the color spectrum. Um, you can add a stroke if you want, which is just really just adding that outline. You can add a background. So this is cool. Sometimes I like to do this uh, where you can just go like more contrasting color. And then bring this up. And you can even round the edges if you want. So it makes for a cool effect. And it really just, you know, because you can do all these captions in a lot of these social media platforms. But the customization is unlimited inside of, you know, in your editing software. So inside of Premiere, it's like you can customize these to make them so they don't look like everybody else's captions. You can do whatever you want with them, whatever colors. Um, and you can also add a shadow, which I like to add a little bit of a shadow um, to mine just to make it pop from the background because we don't have a shadow on here. You know, it, I, I like this look too, don't get me wrong, but for some, for, I, for like viewing experience, I definitely want to be, make sure that it's easy to read. Uh, as it goes across the various different frames. Yeah, especially if it's got different backgrounds. Some stuff might look good on black, but not so good on white. For sure. Okay, so that as I mean, that's everything as far as like, you can go in here to uh, your fonts and you can change it to whatever font that you want. Um, and that's really just, th there's so many different things that you can do. Like if you wanna separate you know, the letters from each other, you can go in there and do that and recreate a whole entire font type thing. Um, make it more bold if you want, but that's, that's how you can do that. So your captions are created, but I want to show you how now you can go even a step further because when this first came out, you weren't able to actually add effects or transitions or things like that. But now what you can do is you can actually, let's, you can actually upgrade these before, before I show you how to do that. Let's just, let's play through these real quick to make sure our captions look good. Cause I don't want to have to backtrack and go fix everything. So let's see what we got. Let's check it out. And the reason you're being intentional with right, your editing so is because don't so I started with the word and yeah, you're being we were doing intentional this. with your editing is because you're working say again. I was just if we were doing this manual like the old school way, it would take oh. so long with that many yeah. words. You would literally, yeah, you would be pulling up the the waveform and you would try to find where the words at or on it would be yeah, it's just be a nightmare. Um and the reason you're being intentional with your editing is because you're working towards something, which is the story. In my opinion, I think... Okay, so I just realized that this portion I do not want to have here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to remove this completely, all right? So we're just going to press uh, delete, and I'll show you how to snap it all back in. We're also going to remove these captions. Just realize that that portion was not what I want to be in there. Okay, so now all we're going to do is click in this empty space right here so you can see what's going on. Um, and snap it all back to the beginning. And now we just remove that area. So in my opinion is what I stated here. And so I like to, just depending on like, sometimes they throw commas in here. Sometimes they make sense, sometimes they don't. So I always go back in and just double check. They also have like a spell check thing that you can do um, if you need to use spell check to make sure that if you, especially if you're doing something professionally and you're sending this to like, uh, you know, the next chain and who's supposed to approve this video. Um, you definitely want to make sure you go through because it's, I, I don't know about you, Alex, but for me, there's so many times things get caught like a typo because you're dealing with so many words and stuff. 
oh, yeah. um it's like the little things like that the video looks great but then there's like you spelled something you know you flipped a letter or something it's just, yeah in my opinion i think every video on youtube should have some sort of story not explain why think of your all right so that looks good yeah, i did a great job yeah so two video knocked all the the captions aren't looking the way that i want them to and i'll just scrub through this just to make sure and one big thing that i like to make sure that i do is just really just feel like a comment go ahead and mute this because we don't need the audio it's really just going through and making sure that you don't have like all my captions are all in the same plane because if you make these too big sometimes the text window will be like it'll be short and then it condenses your word and like chops it in half so always go back through and just make sure because based off of the settings that you had on our, that you put in for the size, there's a text window right here. If it goes out past this text window, it'll drop it down to a second line and uh, it won't look the way that you want it to look. And that happens because you got some like, so you say like a really long word or something. I think that looks pretty good. Scrubbing through this. So what else did we have? Um planned for today that we're going to take people through where, yeah so where are we at right now and in, in right the now we're scheme we, of things yeah we just uh covered the captions like how to create the captions and now what we're going to do is we're going to i'm going to show you how to animate the captions and once we have the captions animated um i'm, I'm going to also bring in some music here in just a second and then we're going to go into uh we'll, we'll finish up with some export settings and everything like that uh, just cool. to show you, you can see kind of like how you should you know what are the best ways that I export my videos or the ways that I export my videos for uh, for social media? So now our captions are all good. So what we can do now, you didn't, weren't always able to do this, but makes it really easy is you can go in and you highlight all of your captions and go up here to graphics and titles and upgrade caption to graphics. And what that does, let's go find it up here because we got has so many layers. It's a I'm neat gonna, little trick. Yeah. So if you highlight all of those, uh, captions and then I'm just going to hold down option. I think it's alt for windows and press the down arrow. You will bring those captions down a layer. Um, and that's how, if you're working with multiple layers, uh, how you can quickly move things uh, across the timeline. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And now you can see your captions are in here. Um, but let's say you want to animate them. So if you want to animate your captions, what well, you can do, like you see, like those pop in and things like that. What you can do is go up here to, um, you're going to go up to effects. Let me just find the window real quick. So if you don't see it, just make sure you click on that and then it'll pull up in the window. Let's go to transform. This is fantastic. These are some like next level caption tricks. That's great. <laughs> and so if you click on transform uh, and then drag it onto your first clip, what you can do is it should open up over here on effect controls. And so let's just kind of go here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to have this pop in. So what I want to do at first is I want the, let's go to the very beginning of the caption. Make sure your playhead set here to the beginning, pull it all the way to the beginning. We're going to set a keyframe here for scale. And I'm going to change this to 70. I'm going to go forward. Actually, let's do this before we get to, ahead of myself. Let's make sure your anchor point and scale and your position point are at the same place. So now I'll, I'll explain. So as you can see where your anchor point is, that's where the text is gonna come in from and you want that to be the same. So let's just adjust these till we have it in the middle because it'll be it'll pop in from the wrong spot. So now that we have it roughly in the same area, the scale in will happen from that anchor point. If you are if, if it um, if you didn't have the anchor point correct, it would be like popping down almost and it wouldn't look correct. So we're gonna start by having the scale set to 70. We're gonna go forward one frame and change this to, this is just what I like to do, change it to 120. It gives you kind of like that Mr. B style effect. Um, you don't necessarily have to you know, do these pop-ins, but it's just another way of just being able to engage the viewer. Um, and what I also will do is I'll just go ahead and highlight all these. And then um, let's go ahead and actually, let's just do, yeah, let's go ease in. And then now what we can we'll do is we'll just play it back real quick. And you're you're probably not gonna be able to see it just popped in real quick. Um and let's do let's go one step further. If you want to add some motion blur, uncheck uh use composition shutter angle and change this to 360. And now you should introduce some motion blur. Which and is so one of the best yeah. I don't even know if you call it a hack in Premiere, but like mm -hmm. 
just you can use that on any effect basically use for that sure. transform it's so it's so handy like i i use like for my tutorials i would use it all the time just to show motion blur zooming across the different uh to the different windows and everything in my tutorials Mm -hmm. All right, so now what we'll do is uh, instead of doing this for like, because you think if you applied this to every single effect, it would take forever. Let's save ourselves some time by right clicking on this transform effect and let's rename, let's actually not rename it. Let's right click and let's save a preset. So let's type, uh, let's pop in text. And then we're going to set this to anchor to endpoint. And that's just going to be the beginning of that, where that caption comes in. And now what we'll do is we're going to go back over here to effects. We're going to close this out and under presets, you'll see that I have a couple over here. Um, pop in text. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. Let's select all of our captions. Hold down shift and deselect that first caption. And click and drag this on them. And now we have text that pops in. So good. And it's you don't have to you don't have to go through and manually do that every single time. Now take it from somebody I have done that every so many times and. <laughs> And, and until, you know, obviously Adobe is over the years has just gotten better and better and better with like the captions and stuff, which this, this is things that took years ago, took hours and hours to do. And it adds just that subtle little element. That's more than what other people are doing and more than what you're getting off just the platform. Exactly. So, and if you don't, you know, if that's not something that you want, you can just leave the captions on there the way that you had them. Um, but that's just my way that I really like doing it. So let's go ahead and let's. Uh, what I'm going to do is go back over here to my project window and let's bring some B-roll in and let's just talk. So let me talk about B-roll for just a second. Mm -hmm. Right. So what you want to do is you want to create, you want to add in and you guys say you, you want to, you can do, you can do whatever, you know, however you want to make your videos. There's no set way that's like the, I, that I, I truly believe there's no like perfect formula for creating a viral video. But I will say that there are ways to be able to enhance videos that um, there, in my experience, there's ways that I've been able to enhance videos with storytelling by utilizing things like B-roll. Um, and, and people will say like pattern interruption is like what's necessary because of our attention spans and things like that. But what I think is what you're doing is you're adding an additional element that helps tell the story. If you think about it that way, because... When I think about pattern interruption, I think about like, I just need to introduce a bunch of cuts and it's just like, make it like, you know, at the end of the video, you're like, <laughs> okay, I can't believe I just watched that, but what just happened? But if you add an extra element to the storytelling process, like B-roll, that makes it more engaging. It gives you a better understanding, especially if people who are doing like education content. It could be something that gives someone more clarity on like what you're teaching them or what you're, what they're learning. So what I'll do is I'll, I've went into Adobe stock and I have some, some B-roll and I'm going to just bring it in and, and just, you know, put it in where it makes sense. And we'll add some effects to it as well. Let me show you real quick. Um, because I have it here. Um, what I, what I put together just in case we don't get through, cause we may not be yeah, able to get through all the B-roll, um, another 10 minutes or so. And we'll kind of okay. recap everything. So, all right, cool. Let me just, actually, let me, let me just show them an example of what B-roll does instead of us, instead of us adding the B-roll in. Excellent. All right. So we'll go in and this is what, find it down here. Yeah, if we end up adding music in and are having time, I'd love to uh, see that remix feature as well. Mm -hmm, for sure. Okay. So auto reframe sequence is what it's under. And then here we and, go right uh, here. While Tyler's doing that, anyone who's watching these, there's just heaps of good information in here. Uh, these will all be archived and rewatchable on both YouTube and Behance. Definitely worth going back. There's a lot of really good stuff in here. And uh, definitely, there's clearly you have so much knowledge. So I well, hope we can have I, you back because there's a lot I here. appreciate it, man. I'm more than happy to come back. And I'm more than happy, like, outside it, like, I'll come back and do whatever streams that, you know, I want to be able to help as many people as possible. And, you know, per reach out to me personally. You can find my, uh, my emails on my YouTube channel. So if you got questions, don't hesitate to reach out. This is in what it looks opinion, like. This is with the with the B-roll, and I'm going to go into the remix feature. In my Perfect. opinion, I think every video on YouTube should have some sort of a story, and I'll explain why. Think of your YouTube video like a conversation. That real quick, and then we'll keep watching. Sorry, people are like, you're just playing with me. You're not. Conversation <laughs> that you're having with a person. I like to compare how to tell stories like having a conversation because we've all had conversations with somebody, and some that are really good storytellers, and then some that are kind of like all over the place and 
you know, they, they talk really fast or they talk too slow or they don't get to the point. Those same things happen in your videos. Imagine you're meeting this stranger for the first time and they're telling you a story and- All it, right, so that's just a couple of ways that you can kind of spice up your video. And that did that all with Adobe Stock. Like there's just stock footage can really help you. Um, and I, I would definitely recommend even adding an additional flavor onto stock footage just to kind of like spice it up. That's why I added the zooms and things like that in there just to, uh, to spice it up just a little bit more. But let's go into the remix feature, okay? So what I do is, so Adobe has this thing to where you can now, like you, you can go in and if you find a track, I'll, I'll pull this, I had this from uh, Adobe Stock. You go into this track and let's say it's not long enough or it's not short enough for your video. You can, just to say it simply, is you can remix the video and make it to any length that you want it to be and get it to it. And that used to be like, before you would have to go and search for many different songs or you would have to, you know, re chop the song up in a way like with cuts to make it naturally sound like it ends or add like a fade or crossfade. There's just all this additional steps that you had to go through, but you know, Adobe's made it simple with the, the uh, remix tool. So what I'm going to do is I have this, uh, where this beat, beat comes in and let's go ahead and lower this. Just definitely want to keep those audio levels on your dialogue. Just to you know, you want to keep it between like, 12 and six negative 12 and negative six db and i definitely don't want my audio or my uh, music uh, being intrusive to my dialogue because the dialogue is what they're there for and that you want the the music should complement uh the dialogue so now what i'm going to do is go ahead and i'm going to go over here to the where the normally the the rolling edit tool would be if you hold down like you click and hold you'll see the remix hidden. tool here yeah a little bit in there yeah but now what you can do is you just click on the edge and bring it to the end. And that's going to take a few seconds. It's going to analyze. And what you'll see are these little cuts that come up here. And let's go ahead and open up the essential sound panel real quick, just so we can show everybody. Um, look at that. All right. So yeah, the essential sound here. And what you can do is you can customize this even further. Um, by playing around with these, just like if there's, you know, more beats and things like that, you can play around with these little sliders here to dial in because it, when you play around with these sliders, it affects these little cutaways. And these cutaways are just points in the song that have been remixed to make it sound smooth. So I'll, I'll play it back and give, show you an example. I think every video on- Let me go back further so people can hear it. Mm -hmm working towards something, which is the story. In my opinion, I think every video on YouTube should have some sort of a story. And I'll explain why. Think of your YouTube- I didn't hear like any, normally if I did that, like just manually, <laughs> it would take me hours to be able to get it to sound smooth. Um, so that's just that's like great. next level. And so you can see now it's trimmed it or it's, it's broken it down to a point to where I can naturally end the video. About storytelling is that conversation that you're having with the viewer. And that, and what I'll do is to, to loop that, you know, I'll just highlight all of that and then press forward slash on the keyboard. Um, and that should, it's going to highlight everything. And then what I'll do is I'll just drag the slide, slide this over. And that just brings it directly to the edge because I can't say how many times I've exported a video and it had a black frame at the end. Um, mm -hmm. So you just kind of pull that over to the edge. And that way you don't have like this additional black frame here, which kind of seems weird because, you know, people will loop through the content. So that's that's how you can utilize the remix feature. But and, you know, if there's any questions on that, please, you know, let us know, um, because that that tool is like so, so helpful. Yeah, I think that's probably my favorite new addition in like the last year. It's mm. just saved me so much time for the shorter uh, social type edits. Yeah, for sure. And, that's, you know, because you can take your song and that you used on your original video and throw that into a subsequence as well and, and remix it and make it your own uh, for that specific clip. Now, real quick, Alex, because I know we're getting close on time. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show export settings. Um, and really, I'm just going to say this. Um, you know, there's ways that you can export your videos. I used to export my videos and I would crank the bit rate up. Um, and that would, you know, I hope that that would make the quality improve. But a lot of these plat social platforms don't like you to do that. And so it'll actually lower the quality because of how big the file size is. So what so I do is I was re-encoding it basically. And exactly. Yeah. So for like Instagram, I'll go with something like I will always use CBR and this is a whole topic in and of itself, but it stands for constant bit rate. And it's basically just going through your entire video, assessing those areas that require more bit rate. Um, 
I wouldn't do VBR one pass because that only does one pass. VBR two pass. Um, last I checked, you you can't use hardware encoding. You you, you want to use hardware encoding if you can, and I'll I'll explain further in just a second. But go with CBR and do this. I usually go between like four and twelve, depending on what I'm doing. Like four for um, like uh, TikTok and like four, like eight, six. It really just just play around with it because honestly, it's <laughs> minimal, so minimal, yeah, minimal uh, results that you get. But real quick, you want to definitely match the source and make sure that it matches what the sequence settings were. Um, and this is all correct here. Um, Select hardware encoding if you have the option. Um, sometimes you'll get this option here. It says uh, your hardware does not support hardware acceleration <laughs> for the current settings. So if you can't do that, you got to go with software encoding, but know that hardware encoding will be significantly faster. I change this to high. I change, leave the level at 5.0. Um, and that's, that's good to go. Make sure that your captions, if you didn't animate them to graphics, you may have to come in here and toggle this on, make sure it's blue and then burn those captions in. And this is another step that I still do to this day. I don't know about you, Alex, but um, Premiere is initial, like basically Premiere is built around for television broadcasting. So when you export your video, if you color graded it, it's not going to have the same colors as what you graded it as if you don't apply a gamma conversion lot. So what I do is from Adobe's, um, as they have it on their website, you can just type in this QT gamma uh, compensation LUT, and you just apply that, and you see a before and after. This is what it, you know, it would, mm. you know, it's going to look like. This is what it's going to look more realistic to what your actual color correction or color grade was, um, and that that happens. It doesn't matter if it's Adobe. Every single editing software has some sort of uh, conversion LUT that has to occur, um, and that's just based off of where. It, um, the, the way that it's designed to be because television is different than web media. But yeah, um, yeah Alex, are there, any, are there any questions? I just want to recap real quick that today we, you know, I've been talking about, there's, there's I have a lot of information in here and I was probably moving quick at times, but um, I'm covering like how to edit your videos for social media, things like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, cut your videos up for short form, repurpose them and post them on the various different platforms. Like you make one video, you can still utilize that one video for other different platforms and you can spread it out in a way to where it doesn't have to be an entire five minute video living on, you know, like, uh, I don't even know if Instagram even allows five minutes, but I know TikTok will, you don't have to put that on TikTok that way. You can just chop it up and take those little tidbits and post them, spring them across social media. Yeah. I hope yeah. this was helpful. Oh my gosh. So helpful. I, I will definitely go back and rewatch. There's, there's stuff in here. I mean, what's great about, I think my biggest takeaway from this is that, you know, we constantly said, but now, or the old school way, and, <laughs> and it makes it great for even editors that have been doing this for 15 years, technology mm. is evolving, Premiere is evolving, Adobe is evolving, and mm. there's just better, faster ways to do it. And I think the thing that really impresses me about your work here and what we've gone through today is just the efficiency um, there's just a lot of great tips in here. So it's just definitely. so important for editors, you know, like just, you know, that's the thing is time is, you know, our most, you know, precious thing that we have. And if we can, you know, make that fat, this is just my way of being able to expedite. I'm sure there's even faster ways. Alex, I'm sure you got a ton of stuff that I'm not even doing. Um, but I hope that this could, you know, help just people that are one, aspiring content creators or video editors, editors for YouTubers, whatever. I hope this was super helpful. And, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everyone in the chat, Go check out Tyler's work. Uh, he has an entire YouTube channel full of just everything. I mean, so much stuff. Um, so yeah, Tyler, where is the best place for people to find you and follow you? If you type in uh, Tyler White on YouTube, I should pop up. But if not, just the my YouTube handle is uh, official Tyler White. Um, and feel free to reach out to me in the comments. And you know, I I do my best to answer all my comments and everything like that. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll set something up if you need. If if I can help you with anything, I'd be more than happy to. Awesome. Well, Tyler, thanks so much for being here. Um, coming up next, stick around. We have a epi new episode of Animation 201 with Pixie Pew, uh, where you can practice all your animation skills right alongside Ray. Um, I think that's all we got here for myself and Tyler. Uh, Tyler, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I just want to say thank you for you know being the host today, man. And I want to thank everybody for uh, for being on the stream and hanging out with us today.
Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's been great having you here and I, I know I enjoyed it and I hope everyone else did too. And hopefully we'll see you around. And if not, uh, definitely follow Tyler on his YouTube and all of his platforms. We'll see you guys soon. Thank Take you. Take care guys.